Uh, let's see, good news coming out of uh, Israel. Uh, the uh, uh, Israeli special forces, uh, while um, uh, clearing tunnels in the south of the Gaza Strip, uh, in the Rafa area, I think, um, in, uh, in, in uh, clearing tunnels and, and going in there uh, section by section, one of the reasons they don't just blow all the tunnels up and destroy all the tunnels is exactly this. They, they came across a hostage uh, who, it appears, uh, the, the, the Hamas had, had panicked and kind of run away and um, had abandoned him. And so uh, the hostage was brought back to Israel and uh, uh, put on a helicopter and, and sent back uh, to, to a hospital where he, was, um, where he was evaluated and got to meet his family and got to see his family. Uh, this particular hostage is an Arab Israeli. He is a uh, Bedouin uh, from the south of Israel. Uh, these are uh, traditionally nomad tribes. They, they're not nomads anymore. He was a security guard at one of the uh, kibbutzim that was attacked on October 7th. He's been a hostage, um, a Hamas hostage since then. It just shows you that they are quite happy to take Arabs, uh, you know, if, if it serves their political, military, genocidal, horrific purpose. Um, uh, he is a father. <laughs> he is a father to 11 children. 11, yes, you got that right. 52 years old. Father to 11 children. Um, I think 11 boys, actually. He's actually got 11 boys. Uh, there are pictures of him in the hospital surrounded by his um, his sons and, and his brother and, and quite an emotional scene. Uh, he received a phone call from, um, from Prime Minister uh, uh, Netanyahu. Uh, you know, he, he, got a, he got a chat with the, with the uh, uh, commanding officers of uh, uh, the mission that ultimately rescued him. Uh, it, it sounds like the IDF had intelligence that there might be hostages in the tunnel. They did not know specifically that it was him. They did not know the specific location. He did mention that he had been with other hostages, that their condition was not very good, uh, that, that, you know, they, they really need a, the Israeli military needs to step, you know, needs to get them out, needs to get them out as, as soon as possible. Uh, I found this, this comment on Twitter pretty um, powerful, so I'm going to read it to you. Um, it's by Khalad Hassan, who is a former Egyptian, uh, lives in, in the United Kingdom. Um, he's an expert on Islamic terrorism and national security and foreign policy. Um, and this is, uh, this is what he read. <laughs> this is what he wrote. Uh, so this is from Twitter, Khaled Hassan. I have to admit, I'm absolutely furious the IDF rescued an Arab Muslim Bedouin Kaid, that's his name, uh, Kaid. I'm not angry they saved him. I'm absolutely thrilled for him and his family. He should be welcome home and given a hero's welcome. But in the Arab world, except for the United Arab Emirates, only a high-ranking general or millionaire would receive the treatment Kaid received. If the Arab world treated us like this, I would have never left. That's why I'm absolutely fuming. At a time when Jews treat a Muslim with such dignity, the Palestinian Authority and Hamas murder Palestinian activists who even whisper a few words of dissent. It tells you everything you need to know, doesn't it? Kaid was escorted like a VIP by soldiers who took him to a helicopter to transport him to a hospital for a medical examination by world-class healthcare professionals. He then received a phone call from the Jewish Prime Minister wishing him well and welcoming him home. I wish every Arab lived in the state of Israel. If they all were granted the rights and privileges of living in Israel, they would have been more Zionists than Herzl himself. <laughs> um, I thought that was pretty good um, and, and absolutely true. I mean, um, th there's no question that an Arab Muslim living in Israel uh, get, has more rights, has more rights respected, 
um, is treated better than um, you know than an Arab in any Muslim country out there. And he makes an exception for the UAE. I'm not convinced that that's true, but okay, <laughs> I'll take it. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's it's it, this this. Uh, saving this particular hostage um, is is super meaningful. The way he's being treated, his the way he talked to the Prime Minister of Israel, for Netanyahu. I mean, there was no Mr. President, Mr. This. I, you know, the way somebody might, if you get a call from the President of the United States, it's Mr. This, Mr. That. You know, it's all this. I mean, he was like, "Hey, BB, so glad you called me. I, please, you know, come over to my." I'm inviting you to my home to, 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 to have a meal with us. You know, it was like, hey, Bibi. It wasn't even, uh, you know, Mr. Prime Minister or Mr. Netanyahu. So th that's Israel. And that is, that is the culture. It's a very informal culture. Um, but yeah, it's heartening. Uh, it, hopefully, this is the beginning of finding other uh, uh, hostages. Um, it's the beginning of Israel, Israeli military rescuing them rather than cutting deals. Uh, and um, maybe, maybe the world is watching this. Maybe, maybe the Arab world is watching this. And, and you know, maybe this is this will help with Israel's um, image out there in the world. Uh, just, just think about how Hamas treats its own people, how the Palestinian Authority treats its own people, and here you have Israel treating its, the Arab population within it much better than any of these Arab countries treat their population. So uh, good for the IDF. I'm glad they pulled it off. Um, it was a successful mission. I hope there are many more to come, um, and they, they keep pulling them out, and they keep pulling them out alive. Let's hope that that is indeed the case.